Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to the Imago Nutrition Podcast, where we answer your questions and give you practical nutrition strategies to help you and your family flourish. And we have a terrific topic, I think an incredibly uh, relatable topic that we're going to discuss today. And so if you are a parent or an auntie or an uncle or a grandparent, or you have little ones in your life in general, and you want to help create a relationship or a, a healthy relationship with those children uh, and refine sugar, right, which we know is out there in abundance, in particularly in uh, American food and in our um, eating patterns. And so if you're a parent or a grandparent or have littles and you want to help create this healthy relationship, despite all the refined sugar that's out there, this is the episode for you. And if you have a question about anything uh, related to nutrition or any topics we've covered or something you're struggling with, we can help you figure it out. Um, you can always submit a question to us and we will consider it as a topic for a future episode. And so you can do that by going to our website, Imago Nutrition, I-M-A-G-O Nutrition.com slash podcast. There's a form right there. You can fill it out and send us a question. And so with that, Daniel, it's been a little while. We took a little break for those that have been following us, right? We hope that you guys uh, were um, um, hopefully, or you enjoyed our Getting Creative with Food series. And so um, if you haven't listened to that, would encourage you to go back through uh, some recent episodes as we uh, took a look at, you know, two foods per episode and just some different ways to get created with those. So again, really practical. But um, Danielle, we're back. You're putting up with me again for another episode. Summer is in full swing at the time of this recording. And so uh, how are you guys doing up there? I know you started crazy morning swim classes with the boys and summer's in full swing and it's hot. And so how are you doing up there? We're doing great. This is probably the best summer, like temperature wise. Um, and we are, or we're at the pool every day, uh, swim practice in the morning and then Monday nights are swim meets. So it's wow. fun. It brings back a lot of memories for me. So very cool. Very cool. Yeah. We're, we're, we're starting to get hot. In fact, this weekend, it just started to get hot down here in Tennessee. Um, so we did have a nice kind of long spring that actually took us into, you know, it's now the third week of June, uh, which is pretty nice, but now we're getting warm, but you know, we're technically in the South. So, uh, we get what we pay for in that regard. So anyways, um, oh, and we should note too, we should just be open and we got a trip coming up together here pretty soon. So in about a month or so, you and I are going to be together with all our families and my side of the family, our siblings, we're going to be, uh, road tripping it to Colorado. Maybe we do a podcast there. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll definitely do some social media content. I'm definitely going to force you to, to jump on. I don't know, like TikTok <laughs> or something like that and do some, some social media stuff. So look forward to that. If you're a listener, um, be sure to follow us on social media to see Danielle in the mountains, giving nutrition advice. That's what we're going to do. So, <laughs> all right. So with that, we've got a great question. I think this hits on a couple of your passions in particular too, just in terms of family nutrition child nutrition, um, you know, and, and just all that comes with that in, in sort of our modern dietary atmosphere. And so we've got a great question. Catherine in California asks, how do I teach kids to have a healthy relationship with refined sugar and sweets when it's everywhere? Great question. And so Danielle would love to toss it over to you to kind of walk us through how to think about this and how to help Catherine in this regard. All right. Yes. Um, I first want to say, I think every mom or parent thinks this at some point or another. I remember it started really young too, for my boys in preschool. I remember like almost every learning milestone had some type of, um, added sugar, you know, dessert involved or a craft mm -hmm. of some sort. I remember they made like gummy bears and Oreos or, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, there's always um, something super creative with uh, desserts. But um, far, first I thought we could just start with some definitions of kind of what we're talking about with refined sugar, what that means, how do we look for it on the label? How much mm -hmm. do we need? Do we need zero? Um, these kinds of things. So there's added sugar and there's natural sugar. And on the label, there's also a line that says um, total sugars. So the, the nutrition label has total sugars on the top, um, right under total carbohydrates, and then it has how many grams of added sugar. Um, so there's a difference, obviously, between the added sugar line and the total sugar line, and that's because there's natural sugar in our food. 
Um, so natural sugar in our food could be fructose from fruit, although fructose can be also added as an added sugar. So um, it would be in the added sugar line if it is. There's lactose, which is the sugar in dairy. And then there's also natural sugars in our veggies too. So um, these natural sugars, we do not need to decrease or watch out for or um, limit, you know, just everything in moderation um, as, as normal with natural sugar. Um, but the added sugar does have a recommendation from the American Heart Association. So for any child two and older, um, the recommendation is six teaspoons of added sugar or less per day. Um, and then for any child under the age of two, the recommendation is actually zero. Um, so <clears throat> let's talk about that. So six teaspoons of added sugar a day is obviously not written in teaspoons on the label. It's written in grams. So what you have to do is take that added sugar line and divide it by four. So if it says this product contains um, eight grams of added sugar, you divide that by four. So in one serving of that product, you're going to get two teaspoons of added sugar. <clears throat> and then you think two out of the six, you know, if it's a child and it's actually the same uh, recommendation for women, um, men are, is a little bit higher at nine teaspoons or less per day. So, um, so that's, what's important to know is how you get to the teaspoons is you just take that, um, added sugar line, divide that gram number by four to get how many teaspoons are in that serving size. Um, and so maybe your child's not eating that full serving size too. So that's something to consider. Um, where we can find common added, you know, what are some foods that are really things that you could look at uh, the label for added sugars would be um, other than desserts would be like cereals, granola bar, any calorie containing beverages like um, Gatorade or fruit punch or one of those um, Capri Sun. Capri Sun. I, was, I yeah. knew you were going Capri Sun. I was going there too. Um, <laughs> classic, ketchup. classic summer pouch drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, ketchup or barbecue sauce. So the salad dressing, I mean, so added sugar is almost everywhere, but that doesn't, we don't want to, you know, worry about it because again, mm. our, our goal is not six. I mean, our goal is not zero. It's six teaspoons um, for, you know, children two and older at six teaspoons or less. So when you're looking at the ingredient list, and that's where you can find the actual word for the added sugar, things like brown sugar, corn sweetener, um, corn syrup, fruit juice concentrate. So that's where they've added the fructose as the added sugar, um, or it could be high fructose corn syrup, honey, molasses, or any word that ends in O-S-E. So those would be dextrose, fructose, glucose, sucrose. So those are all names for sugar. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, if you're not looking at the ingredient list, it would just be kind of helpful just to look at that grams of added sugar line. Um, so does that sound good so far, Mark? Sounds Any questions good. about Sim that? Simple enough. And that's, that's, yeah, I think that's a good encapsulation of kind of how we're thinking about that. It's a lens by which we can start to view foods, right? It doesn't right. come from the place of being scared or worried, just being mindful, like many things mm -hmm. in nutrition, just being mindful of these, but these are not like I, the biggest point too, I think that you made is not only the actual, you know, amounts that we're looking to get to, but just the mindset of don't be afraid. You know, there's a mm -hmm. lot of scare stuff. I mean, I spend a fair amount of time on social media and it's just, I mean, the word toxic is being thrown out, inflammatory, all these sort of things that are being tossed out, just remove it all. Right. Those are actually red flags for what I call quacks, <laughs> right? what we call quacks. So we're not talking about that. You don't need to go to zero necessarily, but just being mindful of this and starting to just uh, begin to pay attention to some of these things and just educate yourself. So, yeah, I think yeah. that's the big turning point, too. We've got some specifics, but also the mindset piece is a big shift for folks. Mm -hmm. So getting back to the question, I, I think she was more so asking about like desserts, not necessarily mm -hmm. added sugar in foods, but that's, um, and I wanted to explain that and you'll see later in these tips of, of why we're, we're looking at the label for those things. So, um, the first tip to have a healthy relationship with food for your kids, um, is just that you are the model. Um, so mm -hmm. if you have a healthy relationship with sugar or desserts, um, then you're going to be setting that example for your children. Um, so what that means is 
they, they need to see you eat desserts. They need to see you enjoy it. They need to see you enjoy it slowly, Mm -hmm. not in front of a TV, not when you're passing through the pantry, you need to sit down with a plate and enjoy it in small bites, eat it slowly, enjoy the, you know, the texture, the taste, the smell, what have you. So if you are modeling that for your kids, um, I, I think it's really important. I, I, my kids, I don't, I don't remember ever telling them, you know, slow down when you're eating your dessert. I did not ever say that, but they're watching you. Um, Mm -hmm. and so I think it's, it's really important, um, to, um, model how you're eating the dessert and that you're not avoiding it. Yeah. One of my favorite adages is that with children, more things are caught than taught. Right. And so like telling them things is one thing and that's great. And there's a place for that in many areas of life, but just know that that observational uh, component is always happening. It's happening more often than the teaching components, like the actual, you know, vocal Mm -hmm. teaching. So just remember that more things are caught than taught. And that's, that's really key with a lot of nutrition, not just desserts, right? Is that Mm -hmm. they are constantly watching um, Mm -hmm. and catching more than you may uh, believe you're actually teaching. So something to be mindful of for parents and grandparents. I think we all start to learn this over time. Like, where did they learn that? And you start to realize, oh man, those are some of my habits that are coming through, you know, and, and, you know, they, they don't exist in a vacuum, you know, that they exist in the environment that we help create. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, thinking about like a frequency that, um, is, is good for your family or right for your family, you know, talk about it with your spouse, um, so that, you know, one, so you're on the same page. Um, so I think that's really important. I think there's a, a frequency where you can, if you, if you have any sweet tooth um, people in the family, uh, a, a frequency at which you're not craving it, but you're still enjoying it. Um, I definitely feel like I could, could have said that in the past. I don't, I probably could still say it. I would prefer a sweet than a, than a chips, uh, per se, but I still, um, I don't have that craving anymore because we find we found our frequency. So I think um, that is key not to avoid, but find your frequency as a family. Hmm. The second one is to watch your language, how you're talking about desserts or sweets. Um, So call it by its name. A cookie is a cookie. A cake is a cake. Candy is a cake. Uh, Candy is candy. (laughs) Um, And And not add things like that's not good for you or um, that's bad or that's special or that's a treat. Those things um, kind of send mixed messages. (laughs) Is it bad for me Mm. or is it a treat? Like treats I think are good or and and we're trying to take away um, the language of food being good or bad. We want Mm -hmm. all food to be on the same playing field. In fact, um, when my kids were little, um, I really followed uh, this dietitian, um, Ellen Satter, and she recommended serving the dessert right with the food at the same time. They could eat it first. And mm-hmm. that is what that goal was, to put the dessert on the same playing field as all the other foods. Um, so there's oftentimes my kid ate the dessert first, and they still ate the meal. So it doesn't ruin the whole meal <laughs> by having the dessert first. My parents thought I was crazy. But it works really great um, to to give that picture that you don't have you know save it for last because it's special or you don't have to finish your plate um, to get your dessert. So just watching how you talk about um, the desserts and just um, naming it with what it is and trying to keep it you know um, all level with other foods. I love that. It's almost too practical, right? It's it's just call call a spade a spade. You yeah. know, I hadn't hadn't really thought about that. The the uh, the disconnect between, you know, when we say, you know, that's a that's a sweet or that's a treat or that's unhealthy or that's like sugary or that's only at night and it starts to create that conflict. That's fascinating. So I love that. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, number three would be to say no sometimes and don't need to give an explanation. OK, mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, in the Ellen Satter principles, um, you are deciding what and when and where and how they decide if they're going to eat it or not. Um, so just saying it's not part of lunch today or it's not snack time yet or what have you. Those are the simple sentences you can say after. You don't need to say, oh, but you already had this much sugar for breakfast or, well, hold on, you're going to have um, dessert tonight because there's a birthday party. We don't need any explanations. Just say, no, sometimes. 
because mm -hmm. it is a sometimes food. You don't have to talk about it like that. You can if your kids are getting older and they're learning about health in school. Um, but, you know, just saying no sometimes um, is really helpful. I feel like we had, you know, at Halloween or those place, those periods of time where you get lots of candy overload. Um, mm -hmm. We always just had a pantry space. I don't know, just put it in there, save it for later. You know, so it's, mm -hmm. it's just, we don't, you know, eat other foods all the time either. So it's just um, trying to keep it again on the same playing field. Um, but no, no is okay to say sometimes. Hmm. Um, the fourth one is definitely not using um, desserts as a reward or a bribe. Um, so like, we don't want to bribe with dessert to finish a meal or to finish your chicken. Um, you know, that put, that's put the, putting the desserts on a pedestal. Um, mm. so use non-food rewards, um, you know, a trip to the dollar store or <laughs> I don't know, it depends on your child's interest, but, um, a date with mom or dad or what have you, um, as rewards instead of desserts. So, nice. um, cause that is kind of thinking about, um, again, relationship with food. We don't, want to comfort ourselves with food. I don't care what food it is. Um, mm -hmm. we want to eat when we're hungry, you know, occasionally we, eat, you know, at a party and we're not necessarily hungry or it's convenient, but nine, 90% of the time we want to be eating when we're hungry, not to comfort ourselves or distract ourselves. Um, so that's where that's coming from. Yeah. And I think that leads to a lot later Number in life. Number five as we would be to not make a big deal out of times when there are centers, a know, lot the of desserts. The so um, um, we recently so had a ha Hawaiian party um, for swim team. And so everyone is like a potluck style. And so everyone just brought some food to share. And, um, you know, my kids and every kid lined up to load up these plates and it's like 9 30 in the morning by the way and they're like eating a huge cookie or a huge muffin or a huge what have you um their plate was loaded um with sugar and we don't need to call it out um i think that's hard sometimes for sure um because i think me for particularly i'm like worried that they're gonna have a huge tummy ache and that's gonna ruin our day um but it's okay for them to eat as much as they want sometimes. Um, so, you know, not raising attention to how much um, sugar we're having. And then number six would be to choose less added sugar products. Um, so you don't need to switch to sugar-free foods, um, but choosing less added sugar foods um, will help you, your family have a less um, sweet um, like palate, if you will. So that's one reason they don't want any added sugar under the age of two is because, um, it can cause you to prefer more sweet foods. And so if we're having less added sugar in all of our other foods at home, it can help us prefer less sweet foods. Um, so some ways to do this would be to, um, you know, have unflavored and flavored. So, um, for me, what we do all the time is we buy a flavored yogurt and then an unflavored yogurt and we mix half and half. So I'm reducing the added sugar there, um, or oatmeal. You can do that. You can have a flavored yogurt or flavored oatmeal and an unflavored packet and mix half and half, or just buy the unflavored and sweeten it less yourself. Um, or Gatorade. Um, so Gatorade, we use a little bit for swim meets, um, and I prefer to have the powder, whereas not buying the bottles because you can put less powder. So it tastes less sweet. Um, so if we're doing that with a lot of different foods, um, we're going to have a less sweet preference. And so things might, you know, that's already out there prepackaged might not taste as good if your, if your palate is used to something a little less sweet. Um, and so, you know, going back to the point where I don't, where I said, you don't need to switch to sugar-free foods. Um, sugar-free, actually, some of those sugar substitutes have a higher sweetness level than sugar. Um, so that is one thing to think about when you're having sugar-free ketchup and sugar-free barbecue sauce and sugar-free yogurt, you're actually increasing the sweetness level um, that your, your taste buds are getting uh, ad adjusted to. So um, I, I definitely feel like, well, our family, if this is definitely a family preference, um, our family, um, uses regular sugar and we just try to use less. Um, and so that's, 
that's again, something to discuss with your family. Um, so that, you know, whoever's grocery shopping knows, um, the, the food preferences. Um, but that is a really helpful one, um, to be able to read those labels. So you can know which ketchup is lower and added sugar. If you don't want to, to buy the sugar free, uh, ketchup for an example. Um, so that's another way to help create a healthy relationship because I feel like it, it helps you crave that sugar less. Um, and then it's easier to have some healthy habits around them. And then my last one is just, um, to serve dessert less at home when there's holidays. Okay. So say like, you know, 4th of July is coming up. Maybe you have two family birthdays stacked up right next to 4th of July. There's periods of times where, you know, um, I hear clients are like, well, we had like five family birthdays in the month of July. Okay. Well then mm. <laughs> you don't need to serve any dessert at home, uh, during that month, you know, mm. so it kind of just, um, consider some planning or thought ahead. Um, if you have a lot of, you know, holidays coming up, uh, where there's going to be a lot of things naturally around where you, so you don't necessarily need to think about having them served at home. Um, nice. so those are my seven tips for us. Um, nice today. And so, I think yeah. you probably saw my internet dropped. So I hope the whole episode goes well. <laughs> Hopefully it was, it was seamless for people. I don't know if I went kind of weird in the middle there, but, um, that's super cool. I love that. I think it's really practical. And again, it's one of those things that, um, and, and we also like to say too, you know, kind of take a couple of these at a time, you know, it's not, don't, don't be overwhelmed by lists. Don't be overwhelmed by here's the seven things I have to do all the time. Just take them one at a time. Take a look at your calendar, take a look at your family rhythms, you know, take a look at where you are, uh, and just start, you know, building these in, you know, uh, gradually sustainably over time, you know, to, you know, um, focus on all things all the time. So yeah. I think that's super helpful, super practical. So I love that. I love it. Love it. Love it. So. I think the biggest one you can start with, if you're going to start with one is, is, is yourself, you know, to yeah. assess your relationship with sugar. Um, do you feel like you're craving it? Do you feel like you're avoiding it? Do you feel like mm -hmm. you're scared of it or you, you know, um, it's just a natural part of your life, um, at some times. Um, so I also had that quote, you know, kind of caught what you're, you, I don't know. I'm going to mess it up. More so this, is caught than taught. More caught than yeah. taught. Yeah. So um, there's a little, we use question books, uh, question cards at our table. And one of the quotes on it says, children learn more from what you are than what you teach. Um, so I think that kind of summarizes a lot what we're talking about today. Um, I definitely didn't tell my kids to eat their dessert slowly, but man, they do. <laughs> They do. Yeah. Sometimes I'm Just like, enjoy. oh my gosh, can we move on with it? Yeah. Um, and I and I think the cool thing about this too is that, you know, in general we talk about this with mindful eating, but like um, it's actually a way that you can increase their enjoyment of these foods. It doesn't take away from it. Yeah. You know, so the faster, the more, the more constant, the more frequent, that does not create a higher appreciation, mm -hmm. you know, for these foods or for these tastes, these textures, these flavors, these intricacies that come with so many of these foods. So just know that the end goal is not less. It's not reductive. It's actually abundance of enjoyment. It's more abundance in, you know, your appreciation for things. That's ultimately the end goal. A lot of people just think of this kind of a side tangent, but in nutrition in general, we talk about this with, with whole foods. You know, we talk about it with minimally processed foods. People are like, well, you just want me to enjoy stuff left. Or I've heard this is like, well, Mark, I wish I could be like you. I just really love food. And, and if I was being, you know, candid with someone, I'm with, you know, enjoying food and abusing food are not the same thing. If I'm being frank, you know, and I really, really enjoy food and there's no food that you eat that I don't eat. Right. So name something. Oh, I love pizza. I eat pizza. I might not eat it as often or as, is, you know, much as you, but when I do eat pizza, I enjoy the living daylights out of it. When I eat cheesecake, which is like my favorite dessert, I enjoy the living daylights out of it. Now, do I, I mean, it was just Father's Day weekend a little bit ago, right? And my wife got me a um, you know, key lime pie. I love key lime and I love key lime cheesecake, you know, but do I eat those every single day? No, not necessarily, you know? And so, no, I shouldn't say not necessarily. No, I don't, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not necessarily, but like only six days a week. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but um but all that's to say, it's about increasing your appreciation for these things, increasing your appreciation, not decreasing your enjoyment. And so that's the that's a big mindset shift. So whether you're talking about sugar and sweets, whether you're talking about even minimally processed foods versus processed foods, um, that's the end goal is actually more appreciation 
um, for these foods while also producing healthier relationship to food, um, more positive health outcomes long term, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's something to keep in mind as well as we kind of wrap this topic up is that the end goal is not less. The end goal is actually more. It's more, more appreciation, yeah. more enjoyment. Um, and that's where some of this mindfulness comes in, whether again, whether related to the foods on your dinner plate or the food on your dessert plate. So mm -hmm. yeah. very awesome. cool. All right. Well, with that, um, if this was helpful, uh, we would love it for you to subscribe to the podcast. Of course, you don't miss any upcoming episodes. Um, drop us a review. Let us know how we're doing. We'd love to see those. That's also a way that um, helps the algorithm, you know, um, uh, kind of put this podcast into the purview of, of more people. So that's one way you can help us out if this episode has helped you out and share it with a friend. If you've got, you know, a mommy friend, you've got a dad friend, you've got a grandparent friend, you've got aunties or uncles that are dealing with littles in their life, curious about all this sugar and all this information out there about sugar and kids and how much is too much and when and this, that, and the other. Um, if you just share this episode, we'd love to help as many people as possible. And so, as I mentioned earlier, you can follow us on social media. Look forward to Danielle in the mountains giving nutrition advice. Uh, we'll see if we can do that at our upcoming trip. <laughs> and as always, we'd like to thank Happy Pill uh, for our theme song, Thinking About Food. We'll see you next time.